The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show. My name is Adrian Benjamins and I'm joined by Neil Rochlani. Neil, how are you? Doing all right, Adrian. I, you know, after one day with me, I thought you decided to abandon me forever. I'm glad you came back for day three and we're doing the show again together. Neil, you and I haven't talked for a day and I feel like I haven't talked to you for a week. That's how much we talk now is that if I don't talk with you for a day, it feels like an eternity. And Neil, we are limping to the end of the first week of the season, man. I feel like we're the Danilo Gallinari of fantasy podcasts, man. Like we're we're pretty good when we're on, but there's a good chance that we're not going to make it throughout the whole season. What do you think about that, man? <laughs> um yeah, so I texted you last night. I miss you because it, and, uh, I was like, Adrian's gonna think I'm the weirdest person in the world. And no, I was like, really? I was like, where was Adrian tonight? It was so, I, it was so weird. I got a kick out of that when I saw that text because I felt the same way. That's how crazy this is, Neil. It's like you and I don't talk for one day, and I'm like, something's off. <laughs> something's wrong here. Um, Neil, can we just? Take a deep breath right now and just, man, everybody is freaking out. It's the first week of the season. Hey, some some players haven't even played two games yet, and we're just seeing all kinds of crazy stuff. Should I drop this guy? What should I do? Look, every season we see crazy stuff happen the first week. Let's just relax. Let's take a deep breath. What do you think, Neil? How are you doing in your league uh, right now? I, that talk should be for me because I <laughs> need that. I need your – usually you're like – now you're the man, man of reassurance because I, I'm i in three leagues. Um, two, I'm doing really well, and then my home league is just a train wreck. And you know what the difference was? In the other two leagues, I randomly dumb lucked into the first overall pick. And I got Anthony Davis, and he is putting up ridiculous stats. And if you luck into that pick, you do well, not because you know anything, but because you get the best player. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that is my little rant on the unfairness of um, snake drafts. Anyway, what? Uh, how are you doing? How are your leagues? How are you feeling? It's, it's too early to tell for me. Uh, you know, my main home league's a roto league, currently six out of 14. But, um, man, I usually don't even like to look at the standings in my roto league until like after 10 days because right now teams have played so many more games than other teams because, you know, I didn't even have a game on the first game, the first day of the season, and I didn't even have a full lineup yesterday. So, um, not even all of my guys have played yet. So, I'm just trying to keep a level head right now. Now, I do have quite a few guys that I maybe missed on or that are underperforming. Uh, Neil, I own a lot of shares of like Mario Hazonia, Kyle Anderson. Uh, I took late shots on like Cody Zeller and Alex Len. Now, like I didn't pay a high draft price for these guys. So it's not like if I miss on them, it's going to hurt me too bad. But I was really thinking like I might be able to count on these guys at the start of the season and it's not looking so good. So um, I hit on a bunch of guys like Jared Allen's been balling. Um, You know, I got Kemba Walker in a few leagues. He had a monster game yesterday. So a couple of good things going on, some bad things going on. As I said, man, it's so early. We just got to just wait for everything to even out. Just everybody just take a deep breath. And relax, and let's see how stuff lands out. Neil, what do you think, man? I like your Aaron Rodgers uh, right there. Um, I listen. I am really frustrated in fantasy sports. I really hate getting behind early, and guys, I know guys randomly have bad games, and um, it can happen at any time during the season. But when it, when it, it's like a confluence of a handful of players right in the beginning of the season. It just puts me into a deep, dark spiral of depression. So anyway, um, I'll bounce back. I'll find a way. 
Actually, I might not. But anyway, I'll keep I'll keep going. Is there anything you want to talk about before we get into the box scores? Um, do you, well, uh, okay. Or anything, any news and notes? Um, LeBron, as we're speaking right now, LeBron is playing his first real live season, first game as a Laker. They're up in the first quarter. Um, what are your thoughts on, on basketball-related news? So, you know, we got a small three-game slate going on tonight. So I thought it could be fun to maybe take a look at some early losers and winners to the start of the season. I made a little list, Neil. I want to know what you think. I love your list. So, okay, go ahead. Awesome. Let's, let, let's, let's throw it out there. Let's start with the losers. And first guy I want to start with is Jordan Bell. Neil, during the off season, there was a lot of hype on Jordan Bell. We were all expecting boogie cousins to miss the beginning of the season which he is we thought jordan bell was going to be the guy he's got a really great stat set for fantasy meaning he brings the blocks he can bring steals uh rebounds scoring we were really excited he can play the power forward spot center spot but neil what happened was in the preseason it was damon jones kevin looney we uh he didn't quite get the minutes and usage that we were hoping. I really cooled off on him in the preseason, and I'm really glad I did. Neil, I believe he got under 10 minutes in this first game or in this game yesterday. And um, word is that Damon Jones is going to be the starting center. I'm really concerned, Neil. I think in standard leagues, um, you know, I just talked about how let's not overreact. Let's take it easy. In standard leagues, I might be ready to bail ship on him if there's a must-add guy. What do you think about Jordan Bell? Neal? Yeah, in standard leagues, there's definitely guys in the waiver wire who have much better potential at this point. Uh, Jordan Bell, one of the knocks on him last year was he was not really uh, – he is uber-talented, but he was not really in position enough on uh, both the offensive and defensive ends and learning the, the uh, system – he wasn't up to speed as quickly as they expected, and um, I thought maybe with the offseason he'd get better. I did not target him at all in any of my drafts. I thought it's so hard to get stats in that offense or and defense with all the other guys they have on the on the court and with Cousins coming in at some point this season. So, um, But, yeah, I, I, I don't think he's worth owning at this point. I mean, you know, if someone else gets injured and he's now the starting guy, even then, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, he's out, of, he's out of favor with Kerr right now, so... Um, I don't think he's worth owning in any leagues. I mean, maybe 24 team deep or something like that. But, um, yeah, I don't like him. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. I think he's going to be eventually a very good NBA player. Just right now, he's, he's not there yet. Neil, the next guy I want to talk about, this one's going to sting a little bit because I think you own a few shares of this guy. Darren Collison, man. Uh, you know, I was really cold on him coming into the season because they added Tyreek Evans. They drafted a pretty good rookie in Aaron Holiday. They have Corey Joseph. Um, we know Victor Aladipo likes to handle the rock. So I was kind of cooling off on Darren Collison. Hey, I love Darren Collison. He helped me win some championships last season. So I love the guy. I think he's a great player. But I was just worried about all these changes. Neil, he did not score in 21 minutes on Wednesday. He did have five assists, but uh, really scared. Uh, you know, Corey Joseph had 11 points in 28 minutes. Corey Joseph got – now, this game was a blowout, which is why I think call, maybe that's why Collison played limited minutes. But Tyreek Evans had a nice game, handled the rock a lot. Uh, Neil, I'm really worried about Darren Collison. How do you feel about him, man? Well, as a Collison uh, owner in, in one of my leagues, um, yeah, I'm terrified because you know, first of all, he he's he's on the downside. We know he's on the he's not he's no longer at his peak performance. He's not a the key. He's not a main guy in that offense or defense on that team. You know, he's sort of the, at the best. He's third or fourth, um, and now it's looking like he could be fifth or sixth. And if that's the case, then he's no longer fantasy relevant. Um, not saying that's going to happen, but. Uh, a couple more games like this, and um, I would get. I would really start to panic. Uh, I'm not going to panic yet, but uh, I am very concerned. So the next guy I want to talk about, and you know what, I got. I'll probably cut this list short because I still want to go over a couple winners, and then we'll get in the games. Um, 
Okay, let me give you this list, Neil, and you tell me which guy you want to talk about. Okay. Kyle Anderson, Marvin Bagley, Marcin Gortat, Colin Sexton, or Kevin Knox. Where would you like to go, man? Um, I think, well, I think they're all, unfortunately, appropriately on your list. Um, but I think Kyle Anderson, only because he is the, probably the the of those four players, the one who was drafted the highest. So let's talk about him. Yeah, I'm glad actually that you picked him because you're absolutely right. Some of those other guys I mentioned went much later in drafts. Let's talk about Kyle Anderson. And Neil, you know, that last guy stung you. This one stings me, man. I own quite a few shares of Kyle Anderson, drafted him in the middle rounds. Uh, 19 minutes came off of the bench on Wednesday, I believe Chandler Parsons got the start. Five points, two rebounds, one assist. Now, you know, he had a heel injury in training camp, which means we didn't see a lot of him in the preseason. But, um, Neil, I'm a little worried, man. Uh, we see some weird minute stuff with uh, Coach Bickerstaff. Chandler Parsons has looked pretty decent in the uh, preseason. He had those uh, PRP injections in his knees. We're hearing he's feeling pretty good. I'm a little worried about Kyle Anderson, Neil. What do you think, man? Well, yeah, I mean, in the preseason, he didn't really get a lot of playing time. Um, I didn't know how serious he might be hurt. The, the, the news is he's got some, like you said, um, roster. He's, got, he's, got, he's dealing with something right now, so he may not – see what he's really capable of for a while. I think you'd have to sit in tight until we feel until we know that he's he's fully healthy and then see how he is in the rotation. Um he still has the ability to fill up the stat sheet. Um maybe not get a lot of points, but get everything else and uh, be a good fantasy asset. So um I wouldn't call him a loser yet. I mean mainly because it's the health issue, right? I, I would say um it's unfortunate. Just kind of wait and see with him. Maybe put him out of your lineup if he's in rotisserie um, if you don't, if you have a games cap and then just wait till he's healthy before you play him again. For sure. And, you know, I definitely had no plans to drop him anytime soon. Uh, I still believe that he can, uh, become the guy that we hoped, but just a really slow start from him. He's definitely getting moved to my bench. Super, super quick. Just going to touch super quick on the rest of these guys. Bagley. Benched for Naminia, uh, for Belitsa. Bagley played limited minutes, did not look great. Um, in limited minutes, I don't think he's going to have the value that we hoped. Gortat, same thing. Uh, got outplayed by Boban and Montrez Harrell. Uh, Gor it, you know, if you drafted Gortat, you probably took him really late, but uh, I don't think we can trust him at all. Colin Sexton, another guy, only played 18 minutes. George Hill getting the start. Again, rookie, uh, you add those low minutes with the uh, with the inconsistency and the inefficiency. Col Colin Sexton, we are not going to be able to trust him anytime soon. Last guy, Kevin Knox, came off the bench for Lance Thomas. Uh, they also played Neil Aquina at the center forward spot, which was weird. Uh, Kevin Knox, man, 4-16 shooting. I don't think we're going to be able to trust this guy. Neil, any just quick thoughts on any one of those guys? Yeah, I just say none of them are worth owning right now in standard leagues. Um, in New York, I think it's going to be hard to predict. I don't think they really want to win. I think um, their coach is on a long leash. He can do whatever he wants. Um, so those lineups could be really kind of all over the place and hard to trust. Uh, except for Tim Hardaway Jr., who is now a top 10 fantasy player as of his first time out. Um, what an incredible game. I owned him last year and he shot so horribly, I didn't want him again on my team. And um, I guess he hit the gym this summer because he's shooting the ball really well. So anyway, you want to get into tonight's scores? Let's do it, man. Let's start. Where uh, Where do you want to start? Let's start um, in my hometown um, of Chicago. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. got the starting role, as you noted, as I saw you note on Twitter. Um the Bulls, though, did go down to Philadelphia, 127-108. I'll go quickly here through the Chicago stats. Um, Justin Holiday also got the start, along with Bobby Portis, Carter Jr., Cameron Payne, and for um, Chris Dunn, who's injured right now, and Zach Levine. Um, most notably, Zach Levine had a very good night, 30 points, an incredibly night, actually, shooting the ball 11 for 19. I was really worried about his field goal percentage tonight. It was a big plus for you. Five rebounds, three assists. 
Six of seven from the free throw line, two three pointers, and three blocks. This guy is freakishly athletic. Um, Cameron Payne did not do really anything in in you know substitution. I really won't even read his line. Um, Carter Jr., the other one who we're kind of watching to see how he could do against you know pro competition. Uh, just played twenty minutes, eight points, three rebounds, three assists. Um, Bobby Portis had a big night, uh, twenty points. Oh, my stat thing just froze up. Uh, 11 rebounds, two assists. Someone I did not think was worth owning, but clearly that is not the case. He's going to be very valuable for the foreseeable future. And then Justin Holiday, who I thought might be a good pickup, but tonight did not really do much. 10 points, four rebounds, and assists. And just two of nine from three-point land. Uh, and no defensive stats. Um, Parker off the bench play, played 25 minutes, 15, 5, and 1 with... Um, a steal and a couple turnovers. And then the one surprise tonight was Antonio Blank Blankney. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering his last name. Um, 30 minutes, 15 points, five rebounds, two assists, two, uh, one three pointer, and uh, no defensive stats. Your thoughts on, uh, on the Bulls' ledger? Yeah, just real quick, I want to say uh, Bobby Portis, you know, the minute I found out that. Uh, that Parker was going to come off the bench. I was really hoping we would see this from Bobby Portis. I would go make sure he's not available in your league. Now, I am worried when marketing comes back that, you know, they're going to start Lori marketing and Bobby Portis was starting at the power forward spot. But man, 20 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block. He's so active out there on the floor. Uh, I, I mean, this is a great, he took 15 shots tonight. So nice usage there. Uh, I like your take on Blake He, uh, now, you know, uh, I drafted him hoop ball dynasty league, 24 teams, really excited about him there. And, uh, I think he's a sneaky guy in these deeper leagues. I'm talking about like maybe 16 team leagues and deeper, Like I would make sure that this guy's owned. I think it looks like he's got a really nice role off of the bench. Uh, the Bulls are really bad, Neil. I think they're going to be in a lot of blowout games. So I can see Blakeney getting a lot of minutes. Now, again, let's take into account no no Dunn tonight, no Valentine, no marketing. So things are going to look r- a little different when this team's 100%. But just wanted to touch on that. Okay, uh, Neil, do you want me to get into Philly side? Or is there anything else that you want to... Yeah, I, don't, I can't imagine Portis is still out there, but obviously if he is in your league, he's a must-own. Um, uh, and like you said, in deeper leagues, take a chance on Blakeney because Cameron Payne's not going to bring you much value, even if he's starting. So, yeah, go ahead with the Philly side. All right. I got to start with Ben Simmons. Uh, flirted with the triple uh, with the triple double on Tuesday. Got it here tonight. 13 points. 11 assists, 13 rebounds, two blocks, one steal. Um, hey, he's supposed to hurt you from the line. He was 3-3 three three tonight, so that's pretty good. 5-8 from the field. Didn't take a three, but that's okay. You're not expecting to get threes from him anyways. Joel Embiid, man, 30 points, four blocks, 12 rebounds. Uh, this is about as good as it gets from Embiid. I guess he could have maybe got you some threes, but it's okay. 12 of 14 from the line. You love a big man that doesn't hurt you from the line. That's awesome. 9 of 14 from the field. Embiid is locked and loaded this season. Markel Fultz, man, uh, I'm really happy to see this line because I was watching this game, Neil, and in the third quarter, he didn't have much going, so he must have turned it on here late in this game. Um, 12 points, two steals, five assists, four rebounds. I'll be honest with you, Neil. This guy was like, I was on the fence in some standard leagues. Like, man, I might need to drop this guy. This is kind of giving me hope right here. Played 32 minutes. Uh, again, this game was a blowout, so maybe he got some extra time here. Um, didn't shoot it well, 5 of 15. Did add a three, so that's pretty nice. Um, hey, Bob Covington, uh, I was slamming this guy, I think, on Tuesday. Hey, he he's he's alive, man. 20 points, two steals, a block. You love the defensive stats. Two assists, five rebounds. 
uh, Bob Cub truthers, stand up, man. This guy, is, welcome to the NBA season. Awesome, man. Um, Dario Saric, a, another guy, Neil, that you and I were kind of low on on Tuesday. 13 points, 10 rebounds, three assists. You know what? The Bulls is what the doctor ordered to, uh, you know, when when you're having a tough time, man, play the Bulls. Um, <laughs> real quick, uh, one guy I need to mention for you, super deep leaguers. We talked about Blake Knee on the Bulls side. Shamet, I don't even I did this guy. I didn't even know who he was coming to the season. Put up two good games in a row, 12 points tonight, four rebounds, two steals, played 29 minutes. This guy's got a roll off of the bench. Um, we are missing Chandler and Bayless, but pretty good game here from Philly. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, I'm gonna have to defer to you on those deeper leagues. I I don't even know how to pronounce that guy's last name, so I'm not Landry. Um what I'm going to say is, yes, it helps to play probably the worst defense in basketball. Um, so take all these numbers with a grain of salt. I mean, it's great. Anytime they play, someone's playing Chicago, um, definitely start a player who's like kind of fringe-worthy because uh, Philadelphia put up 127 points uh, along with a lot of assists. And, yeah, it's good to see Covington back shoot well. Um, and it's good to see Markel Fultz have a game like this. I did drop him. I'm still worried about his percentages, you know, five of 15 and one for two. And, um, and just also like it, it's, it's the bulls. I don't, I don't want to rag too hard on my home team, but they, they're just not very good defensively. And, and Philly is a very good team. So, um, great night all around for Philadelphia fans and Philadelphia owners. So, uh, that's about it. Nothing new for me. Uh, Redick, only 24 minutes. Um, that's the one thing I was a little concerned about. They didn't really need him. Uh, he's someone who's usually like a good late-round pick. This year, if he starts to take more of a backseat to Fultz, maybe he is on the outside looking into a 12-team league. We'll see. I'll still hold on to him. Um, he's still a very talented veteran that can kind of find a way to score and make three-pointers and you know pass the ball well. Tonight, just one assist, though. So, um I might. I wouldn't cut bait with him yet, but I would be a little worried about him. Yep, I agree. All right, let's move over uh, to the second game, which was the Miami Heat and the Wizards. Neil, why don't you start us off, man? Wherever you want. All right, let's go and uh, let's go with Miami. Um, a couple of um, starters I did not know about until a couple of days ago: Derek Jones Jr. and Rodney Magruder. Um, both had solid games. Um, Derek Jones Jr.'s 24 minutes, 17 points, five rebounds. Uh, just six for nine from the free throw line, though. I haven't seen this guy get really picked up in any leagues. Same with Rodney Magruder, although tonight Rodney had a much better game. He had, he's had 30 minutes in both, 30 plus minutes in both games. Uh, tonight might be the night people start to grab him because he scored 20 points, eight rebounds, six assists, three of three from the line, three three pointers, and a block. Um, an incredible fantasy line. Uh, Hassan Whiteside, nine points, ten rebounds, um, three of six and three of five, respectively, with one block. Goran Dragic, uh, not much in the scoring department, but did do well. Um, actually, Adrian, can you take over for a second? I'm going to lose my battery. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, I want to talk about Josh Richardson. Uh, second game in a row that he went off, 28 points, a steal, a block. Five assists, four rebounds, was seven of eight from the line, five of 11 from three, eight of 21 from the field. Now, yeah, you would say, oh, that's not good shooting, but what is what stands out to me, the 21 shots, he is now the clear alpha of this team. Neil, do you remember last season there was a time where we were like, man, I really wish Josh Richardson shot more and I really wish his scoring was just better because he does everything else. That time is here, man. This is you guys, congratulations if you draft if you drafted Josh Richardson this season because he is set for liftoff this this year, man. He is going to finish as a top 35 player this season. I am sure of it. So uh, I just wanted to touch on Jay Rich. Uh, Neil, why don't you uh, jump back in here? <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, I got got, got my uh, charger in there. Sorry. Okay, Dragic, like I said, did not have many points, but did have eight assists, six rebounds, eight points. Horrible night. Shooting a three of 18. Um, the 18 shots was, I guess, good to see because he's not a bad shooter. Um, just one of six for three-point land and a steal on a block. Um 
Okay, so yes, Josh Richardson, I, I think he's going to be even higher than top 35. I think he's, I don't know, the sky's the limit. He, he is now going to be like someone who gets drafted in the second and third round going forward if he's, if he's the main guy on the team. Um, he's supremely talented both offensive and defensively, and it was really good to see him uh, getting this prominent role. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Um, should, w- would you drop, uh, would you pick up Rodney Magruder? Do you think he's going to stick around in the starting lineup for a while? Here's the reason why I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on him, Neil. No Wayne Ellington, no Dion Waiters, no Justice Winslow, no James Johnson. I mean, this team is missing a lot of key players. But for the short term, if you're looking for a short term pickup in deeper leagues, I think he's a fine pickup. I, I'm actually really glad that you mentioned him because the minutes is key. Didn't you say, is this the second game in a row that he's played over 30 minutes? Exactly. Uh, Miami, Miami's got a really friendly paced offense. So if he's going to get that kind of minutes, he's definitely going to be fantasy viable. I'm just a little worried about his long-term af- his long-term outlook once they get all these other guys back. Neil, did you have any other questions? Well, fair enough. Because right now, I'm. This is the thing that happens in the league. When I get when I when I'm falling behind early, I get desperate and I start to just grasp at anything. Um, Neil, it's too early. I know, but I hate falling behind. Okay, Neil, anyway, so I we're I like four days I, in, I, man. I know. Come, I know. Don't, I don't, understand. don't freak out yet. No, hey, you know one thing I do need to say is usually the first week of the season. There are some pickups available that are game changers. Neil, let me give you an example. In my home league, I was able to pick up Tyreek Evans and Jason Tatum the first couple days of the season. Those two guys led me to a championship. Uh, My buddy Frank, who you know, he picked up Donovan Mitchell the first week of the season. So there are guys that are going to pop up Do not hesitate. Jump on these guys because at the beginning of the season, there always is. They're game changers. They're difference makers. Uh, For an example, I don't know yet. Malik Monk is a very popular ad right now. Uh, We don't know. Is is he a game changer? I don't know. But you don't want to miss out on those guys that are. So, Neil, I do like your mindset of being aggressive and being active. But be careful because people always – also, the flip side – People often drop guys they shouldn't drop. So watch out for that, too. Yeah, well, I guess the one upside of having a bad draft is that you have plenty of guys you can drop. (laughs) And so you can keep throwing darts against the wall, hoping one of them, when you close your eyes, hits somewhere close to a bullseye. So that's what my strategy is right now. Um, All right, you want to take us to the Washington side? Let's take a look at the Washington Wizards. I'm going to start with John Wall, a guy that I was really scared of during the offseason because we saw a scary picture of him when he reported to Team USA. But he looks good. 26 points, three blocks. You love getting three blocks and a steal from your point guard. That's awesome. Nine assists, three rebounds, seven to ten from the line. One of six from downtown, nine of 16 from the field. Great game from Wall. Uh, Otto Porter Jr., a guy I've been sh- I shied away from because I'm worried about the Dwight Howard effect. No, no Dwight Howard in this game. And Porter, just a ho hum line here, nine points. Oh, actually, I'm going to take that back. Three blocks, three steals, 11 rebounds. Who cares about the nine points? Three of four from the line. Three of seven from the field. Good game from Otto Porter. Uh, Neil, a guy who you said that you own in your home league, Bradley Beal, 20 points, one steal, two assists, one rebound. You wish he kind of did a little bit more like in those other stats. But, Neil, I think you're going to be pretty happy with Bradley Beal. I know you told me earlier that you felt like you were playing it safe. But I think when the season's over – you're going to be pretty content with uh, Bradley Beal. And then uh, let me take a quick look. Uh, Jeff Green off the bench with 17 points, four rebounds. Uh, I think we got to keep an eye on Jeff Green. Uh, you know, he's – he okay, Neil, uh, 
Jeff Green's one of these guys that kind of tricks us every year, right? He goes through small stretches where he looks good. We pick him up off the wire. We plug him in, and then he disappoints us, and then we draw. And then it's like an endless cycle. But here's the thing, Neil. Jeff Green went home. This is his hometown. Uh, Bradley Beal, John Wall, these guys were talking him up, saying how great he looked. You deep league, uh, you deep leaguers. I would keep an eye on Jeff Green. Played 33 minutes, and this was a close game, by the way. This game went down to the wire, so these minutes right here should be a pretty accurate, um, an accurate idea of what we're going to see from this team. Keep an eye on Jeff Green. Um, not too much else I want to talk about. What do you think of the Wizards, Neil? Um, yes. Uh, let's see. So, did you mention Markeith Morris? Did you no, about tell him? me okay, about yeah. him. Yeah, no, he had a decent night. I mean, just played 25 minutes. He's been someone who's like a late round. You know, he's been going later rounds and kind of serviceable at that uh, draft pick. Tonight, 11 points, five rebounds, two assists. Uh, did have two blocks, so that that certainly helps a lot. Um, like you said, Otto Pro Jr. Excuse me, had a really good night defensively. Something he does every every, um, every year, it seems. Uh, Jan Mahimi um, only played 12 minutes. He must have gotten hurt. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the news on that in front of me. And then, like you said, Jeff Green came in and had a phenomenal night. He's someone who tends to sit right on the edge of the wave wire as well. Uh, when he gets the minutes, he seems to be fantasy worthy. And tonight he did. He got 32 minutes. I'm happy to see John Wall have a good night. I was worried about him as well from seeing that Team USA picture. I thought he may never recover from that but clearly he's just fine um yeah bradley beal i own in two leagues um i've been trying to trade him in both those leagues because i just don't like him as a player <laughs> I, I think right now i would trade chetty Osman for bradley beal after one oh, no, hot I'm, take. I'm, I'm totally kidding but i hot think take. <laughs> uh, hey wait you know what yeah. real quick yeah. um can i say uh so osman makes me so mad not because he wasn't good he was great but because neil i talked about him so much in the off season he was on my like do or die must have must draft list neil i didn't end up out of 11 leagues i did not get a single share of seti osman and i am so pissed about it man this is why i try to tell you guys go get your guy and you know what happened neil Every uh, draft I was doing, I kept thinking to myself, I could wait one more round. He'll still be there in one more round. I could wait just one more. And then he would get drafted, and I'd be like, why did I wait so long? And I'm telling you, man, he is long. Neil, you and I talked so much about him during summer. I can't believe I don't own him anywhere, and I am going to be aggravated all year watching him play because he looks good, man. Yeah, he looked really good. Um, um, and a very, against a very good defense as well, too. So on the road. Um, very impressive first game for him. Uh, I here's the thing. Like when you do, when you take a guy who you don't really want to take, he doesn't work out, that's like the worst feeling, right? If you take a guy who you and if you pass a guy who you really like and you're like, eh, I'm not sure people aren't really high on him, I'll I'll maybe not take him. And then he works out. And you don't take them, it's so frustrating. So take your guys. I'm learning that this year after all these years in life. Um, uh, <laughs> take your guy. I, I will say, though, we, we, I think we both took Kemba Walker by accident in two different leagues, right? Because he was a good value. And he had a pretty good game. So it, it can't work out the other way. Um, anyway, um, all right, that is it for the first two games. Um, do you want to, well, anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? Uh, no, I'm all good. I just want to thank all the listeners for uh, listening and supporting the Box Score Breakdown Show, our very first week of the season. Thank you, guys. Neil, you, I know this has uh, kind of been an exhausting week for the both of us, man, but um, uh, we made it. We made it to the end of the week. Happy Friday, everyone. Neil's going to stick around to go over the Lakers and Blazers. Of uh, Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Neil's going to give you his Twitter after he's done with the Lakers and Blazers. Thank you guys so much. We're so excited to be here doing the show. I can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. Okay, turning our attention now to the last game of the evening, the Lakers at Portland. Portland 
wins 126-119. And uh, LeBron James, in his debut, played 37 minutes more than I expected. Uh, 26 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, 9 for 16 shooting, 8 of 9 free throw. That is really great to see. Um, did not make a three-pointer. Did have a steal and, a, excuse me, no blocks, but six turnovers. Um, uh, the free throw shooting, great to see. That's the one Achilles heel besides the turnovers, which will just be there because of just how much he handles the ball. Brandon Ingram um, just played 28 minutes, 16 points, four rebounds, and an assist. Um, shot the ball fine from the field, 7-15. Struggled just a tad bit from the line, 2-4. of Did not make a three either but did have two steals, two blocks, um, and just one turnover. I think he is someone who is being drafted more around the hundreds uh, or late uh, 75 to 100 range, and and I think he could exceed that this year if these um, with the turnovers down and then with his defensive stats. So JaVale McKee played 22 minutes, um, five for six from the field, 13 points, eight rebounds and assists. Uh, one steal, three blocks, someone who might be sitting on your waiver wire, and if you need uh, field goal percent and blocks, he will help you there. Um, didn't really hurt you tonight from the line of three or four, but he may hurt you down the road. Probably won't get you many assists. Had one tonight, um, but everything else should be serviceable. Uh, Rondo, this is uh, my biggest question mark. I uh, played 32 minutes. Uh, Lonzo is still not fully healthy. Not sure what the dynamic will be once um, that changes. Rondo closed the game um, and um, with Lonzo out there. So they had those both point guards out there at the end. Um, and I think as long as they're trying to win, Rondo is still um, the more experienced. And as long as he's producing, which he did tonight, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 11 assists, 6 of 12 shooting, um, and a steal. Uh, someone who will certainly get assists. This team's going to go up and down the court. Rondo's very good at um, delivering the basketball to people in good position. May not score this many points. Um, did take 12 shots tonight. That might be a little high. Um, he will never have a great percentage. And then his defensive stats had one steal, no blocks. May get a steal or two. Really just someone if you need assists and can sacrifice the points. He's always been a good rebounder, but um, on this team with LeBron and um, Ingram and JaVale McGee, he may not get that many rebounds. Um, the other starter, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, really did not contribute much tonight. Played 27 minutes, uh, 5.3 rebounds. Um, really not someone worth owning, I think, in a 12-team standard league, uh, maybe in deeper leagues. Uh, really, though, the bench players um, – Pouring it on for the Lakers. Uh, Kuzma, Hart, and Ball are the three big ones. Um, Hart had the best night. Played 27 minutes, 20 points, four rebounds, and assist. Shot incredibly well. Eight of 12, including three from three of five in three point land. Three steals, two blocks. I really like Josh Hart as a player. I would love to see him. I mean, at 27 minutes tonight, he was had incredible fantasy value um, because of those, those defensive stats and the shooting percentages and the points. Um, and this Lakers team is going to put up a lot of points. So I don't think it's someone maybe to put on your watch list. I, I don't know if I'd grab him just yet. Um, I would love to see him get in the starting role over Caldwell Pope. Um, certainly looks like a starter out there. Um, I think one of the better players on this team. Uh, Kuzma did not shoot well. Five of 14, 15 points, five rebounds, uh, no assists. Um, a steal. I think he is, of all these young players, he's the one I'm most worried about um, in terms of his ability to do what he needs to do, which is knock down shots. Um, and he has not been a great shooter. Uh, he doesn't need to be a, the, the creator with um, Lonzo, Rondo, and uh, LeBron there. So not sure if he's going to be worth owning a fantasy this year. We'll see. Um Lonzo Ball, uh, not fully healthy. He did play 19 minutes, though. Seven points, four rebounds, one assist. Someone, if you own uh, a steal, 
and he did go two for two from the line, which is good, just two for seven from the field. Someone who, who if you do own, would uh, would leave on your bench for a while and see where this goes. He may flip with Rondo in the starting role at some point, and that, or or get upper twenty minutes. Um, uh, possibility we don't know yet. I think it's gonna it's not gonna be anytime soon, but it could be. Um, in a few weeks, maybe in a month, or or maybe never. Uh, that one you just have to kind of sit and watch. Um, and um, I wouldn't drop him yet, though. He has so much potential in every category, and if he can shoot free throws decently and from the field decently, or not take too many shots, he will have great value at the end of the season. Uh, moving to the Portland side, um, let's see. Surprised by this start, Jake Lehman uh, started small forward. Amino at the power forward, Nurkic, Lillard, McCollum. Uh, Lillard played 35 minutes, had 26, 6, 4, went 9 to 21 from the field, perfect from the line, 6 to 6, 2 of 7 from three point land, one steal and a block, a great line for him. McCollum, 21, 4 and 1, did not shoot all that great, just a couple shots off, 6 to 17, did go perfect from the free throw line and made three three pointers, no defensive stats. That's something I worry about him a little bit this season. Um, Aminu, Lehman, and Nurkic really didn't do a whole lot. Nurkic actually did okay, but only played 17 minutes, 16 and 8, um, with two steals, and he did go two for two from the line. So that's really good to see as well. Seven for 13 from the field. Lehman, just 13 minutes, nothing to mention really on the stat line. Same with Aminu. Someone I think is on the outside looking in, just one for 10 shooting. The other... Players of note, uh, Nick Stauskas um, pounding his chest as he knocked down uh, five of eight three-pointers. Fantastic shooting night. Didn't do anything else. Uh, uh, two rebounds, two assists. I, I don't think he's worth owning in standard leagues. Uh, Zach Collins, really good off the bench. Um, played many more minutes than Nurkic, 26. Um, Nurkic was in foul trouble, though, so this could just be that case, or it could be the fact that he was minus 17 in the plus minus. So uh, Nurkic last year did not play that many minutes for someone who is in the starter's role. Um, Zach Collins uh, this year may be coming along to get 26 minutes on opening night and to have a better plus minus. I know that's not everything, but he did have five blocks along with a steal, um, five rebounds, two assists, six points. And three or four shooting, sort of going to be a great role player. Um, if he if he starts to get twenty six to thirty minutes a night, definitely I think worth an add. Um, if you need blocks and you need field goal percentage, and uh, Nurkic maybe you're a little worried about. Um, although maybe I missed something on injuries, so I apologize if that's the case. Anyway, um, nothing changes here. If you had Aminu, I don't I don't think he's going to be worth owning this year. Um, they seem to be deeper, um, getting Collins in there. Harkless is now back. Just played 18 minutes, but 7-6-2 and two with three blocks. He's someone who I was thinking about targeting, um, but once I heard about his injury, I decided to hold off. Um, I expect him to be back in the starting role at some point soon, and uh, at that point, perhaps he can get his minutes up and his, his uh, rest of his stats up. But otherwise, a decent line in just 18 minutes. Um. I think you're just holding tight with if you have anyone now. I don't see anyone really to pick up uh, Stauskas despite his scoring. And then uh, on the Lakers side, uh, Josh Hart is the one I really like who may be sitting out there in your leagues. And um, um, I, it's just the minutes here are so hard to predict. Um, and, and then what his role is going to be. There have so many players here who can uh, score. And um, tonight he was able to get 12 shots off so and knock most of them down you know if he has a bad night shooting all of a sudden his night looks really worse he could let's say instead of eight for 12 he went you know off night shooting goes three for 12 he could end up with you know eight points four rebounds and assist and then the good defensive stats but i don't know if you can count on those every night so uh hold off maybe put them on your watch list um if you're desperate for someone at the shooting guard um pick them up but other than that I am holding off. And with that, I am going to wrap up. Thanks for everyone who listened this week. Really appreciate it. Um, Adrian and I both appreciate it. If you have any questions, please 
Hit me up on Twitter at Ball with Neil, B A L L W I T H N E I L. Uh, anytime, happy to give you my advice. Hopefully, it's actually useful. And um, with that, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you all next week. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.